Welcome to the Comlex 5 minute review. Please visit us at www.comlexflashcards.com for this complete lecture. Now today's topic is anemia. Anemia is basically a decrease in RBC mass um, and on lab studies you can see a hematocrit less than 41 percent and a hemoglobin less than 13.5 grams in men whereas in women it's hematocrit less than 36 percent and hemoglobin less than 12. Clinical manifestations include things like fatigue, exertional dyspnea, angina if the patient has CAD, and all of this is due to decreased oxygen delivery. Patients have signs of pallor, especially in the mucous membranes and palmar creases. There's tachycardia, orthostatic hypotension, um, and then you know a variety of other symptoms such as jaundice if the patient is undergoing hemolysis, um, splenomegaly in cases of thalassemia or neoplasm, petechial purpura if there's a bleeding disorder, and uh, glotitis in iron folate vitamin B12 deficiency, or um, coilankaya in iron deficiency, and neurological abnormalities in vitamin B12 deficiency. When you order um, lab studies, it's important to have an approach so as you don't order too many lab studies. And some things that you definitely need are um, the CBC, the um, RBC parameters, including reticulocyte count, MCV, and RDW. History should also focus on things like uh, bleeding, any systemic illnesses, whether patients on any kind of drugs, exposure to alcohol, or their diet, such as the PICA diet. Now the reticulocyte count is important in approaching anemias um, because if the reticulocyte count is less than 2% then you're looking at an underproduction and your differential should focus on um, then looking at the MCV count and so you know a reticulocyte count less than 2% you would focus on then getting an MCV count. If the MCV count is low, you're looking at microcytic anemia. If it's normal, it's normocytic, and if it's high, it's macrocytic. Let's say the reticulocyte count is greater than 2%, then there's some sort of an increased destruction or loss. And so you would order a LDH, um, you know, if, if you're thinking of hemolysis, or look at the b increased bilirubin or decreased haptoglobin. Um, you could also look at, you know, signs and symptoms of bleeding, such as, a, you know, recent acute blood loss. So knowing the reticulocyte count can help you shape your differential easily. Now the peripheral smear is, um, you know, a select area where RBC is evenly spaced and um, you can look at their size, shape, um, and various abnormalities and, you know, it, it can really help you narrow down your differential. So size is important, you know, whether the whether or not the uh, cell is normocytic or microcytic or macrocytic. Okay, the shape is especially important. Uh, for example, spherocytes um, are common in, um, as you can see here, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, hereditary spherocytosis. Target cells are common in thalassemias and other hemoglobinopathies. Um, teardrop cells in myelofibrosis, Burr cells in uremic patients, spur cells in uh, liver disease. Um, Howl jolly bodies are very common in splenectomy or functionally asplenic patients. Hypersegmented neutrophils and megaloblastic anemia. And so this will really help you narrow down your differential. And, as, and schistocytes and RBC fragments seen in burn patients or um, patients suffering from microangiopathic hemolytic anemia such as TTP, HUS, DIC. Um, immediately, you know, if you look at, if you have a peripheral smear, you can definitely narrow down your differential and it's going to help you. Um, there's uh, bite cells which are in G6PD deficiency from the removal of Heinz bodies by phagocytes. Um, a Rouleau formation could be seen in multiple myeloma for a hyperglobinemia uh, state. And um, we talked about teardrop cells with dacrocytes. Um, and so, you know, really knowing the peripheral smear can help you. Now, there's also things like the intra RBC findings, such as basophilic stippling. Um, and that could be due to um, abnormal hemoglobin or sideroblastic or megaloblastic anemia. Heinz bodies, which are common in G6PD deficiency. Howell Jolly bodies, um, which are nuclear fragments um, seen in patients with, again, splenectomy or sickle cell um, disease patients. Now, the WBC findings can also be helpful. Hypersegmented neutrophils, as we talked about are going to narrow down your differential to B12 and folate deficiency. Sometimes there's toxic granules like coarse, which are coarse, dark, and blue, and um, DALE bodies, which are blue patches of dilated endoplasmic reticulum, which can narrow down your differential to sepsis or severe inflammation. Patients can also have a, th a blast, which are a sign of leukemia or lymphoma, hour rods, which can narrow down your differential to an acute myelogenous leukemia. 
And so this is going to be extremely helpful, um, you know, as you approach anemia in your patients. And we have a couple of slides here to go through. Here are schistocytes. Um, and again, these are, um, you know, similar to helmet cells. They're seen, seen in DIC, uh, TTP, HUS, uh, mechanical valve um, patients as well. And then there's Burr cells. Um, as you can see, um, they're even regular projections and common in uremia patients. Um, there's also spur cells, which are irregular projections, and these are common in liver disease. Target cells, which are also common in liver disease, um, you know, hemoglobinopathies, um, and splenectomy patients. Um, hypochromic microcytic anemia, okay, this is a very common finding right here. And, um, okay, and then there's obviously spherocytes, which are common in, um, sickle cell patients and sickle cell anemia, okay, the teardrop cells which are common in myelofibrosis or uh, megaloblastic anemia, um, you know, also, um, they're also known as dacrocytes, you can see them in um, um, megaloblastic anemia or thalassemias, but uh, mainly myelofibrosis. Howell jolly bodies we talked about are nuclear fragments as you can see them, and um, these are in uh, splenectomy sickle cell patients. Heinz bodies are common uh, with G6PD deficiency. Um, there's denatured hemoglobin. Um, also, this is um, AIHA, and um, again, this can help you narrow down your differential as you're appro approaching, um, you know, schistocytes and other um, conditions when you narrow down your differential. And so, all these peripheral smears are definitely helpful. Again, here's cold agglutinins. Okay, so cold agglutinins are also definitely beneficial when you're going through, um, you know, types of hemolysis, looking at uh, the different types of anemias. Um, it's going to basically make sure, help you narrow down your differential uh, as you go through the various anemias. There's a smudge cell here, which is common in CLL. Okay, um, AML, we talked about hour rods. CML, again. Um, and hairy cell leukemia, which is TARP, the important stain that you want to remember. Um, and these are the references. So again, we'll go through each of these individually, but it's nice to have an overview of all of the um, different peripheral smears. Again, visit us on our website at complexflashcards.com for complete lectures and even more information daily. Good luck.